Thanks for that introduction, Tim. It's, it's uh, never good to follow Manos on a CTO talk, but I guess he set up the program, so we'll, we'll go with that. Um, I am, my disclosures, I am an interventionalist who does like to do, do CTOs, so where's Manos? I, I guess that means I'm not an elephant in a circus, huh? I saw this cartoon uh, a few years ago, and I, I thought it was indicative of the way that, that we look at and treat patients with chronic pill occlusions. The crux of it is a, is a lady who has a doctor visit, and she eventually comes home and, and finds out that her doctor thinks she's a hypochondriac. And I suspect what the conversation before was, the doctor saying, and, and, and it's surprisingly, you see this more... <coughs> This phrase said more by interventionalists than non-interventionalists, but ma'am, you, you've had a blockage. It's been blocked for a long, long time. You've developed beautiful collateral flows. Your symptoms cannot possibly be coming from this chronic total occlusion. Over time, she's complained a little bit more, and, and finally, she, her cardiologist decides, we're going to get you a stress test. And you see here, this arrow one again. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is a big defect in the anterior wall right here on the stress images, and it improves here in the rest, suggestive of, of a large amount of ischemia in the anterior wall or the LED territory. With that high-risk stress test, they decide to, to, to proceed to cardiac catheterization. And our lady is, is here on the, your right. She's got a chronic total occlusion here, right here. I put this picture on the left as an example of a high-grade lesion in the LAD where we would all say, hey, that's a, a simple thing. We should put a stent in here. We should make her feel better. And I would say with the findings that we have, her symptoms, the stress test findings, we should treat CTOs the same way. In this case, she did. Uh, have an interventionist who wasn't an elephant and she got treated with the stent just like the, uh, the person with the non-CTO. And this is the final result. So why the bias? Why isn't one when it's a non-CTO we're so willing to put a stent in and when it's a CTO we're more reluctant? Well, there, there's some obvious reasons. One, CTO interventions are more complex, they're more challenging, they're more time consuming, and they are more risky. Uh, for Manos, we put in a Greek reference here, the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And those are all things that we're moved by as physicians. Another thing that is often said too, and, and I'm going to argue in the next few slides that this is, this is not true, is there's no real benefit in opening a CTO. It's been that way a long time. There's collateral flow, why do it? Anytime I see a new patient, I tell them, I'm good for you and only so far as I can accomplish two things. Either one, I make you live longer, or two, I improve your quality of life. And I would say that that's a good measure to judge any therapy as well. So we'll use that measuring stick to assess CTO PCI. How does CTO-PCI stack up in terms of mortality benefit? We're going to look at three studies here that show it, it has a positive in, impact. This first study is a single center study done in London from 2003 to 2010. They looked at over 838 PCIs of which 70% were successful. They followed these patients out for, on average, 3.8 years. And if you look here, these are, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, these are what we call Kaplan-Meier curves. So on the y-axis here, we look at mortality. So the higher you are on this line, the worse you are as a therapy. And this is over time. If you see in the red, these are the patients with unsuccessful CTO-PCI have a much higher mortality than the line here with successful PCI. Interesting is, as well, they also looked at patients who had non-CTO elective interventions 
like that other patient we illustrated earlier, and their mortality curves were similar. Well, that's just one center. Would Dr. Choi, do you have any, any bigger data? The, the next study we're going to look at is an international three-center trial uh, looking at patients, um, over 1,700 patients with 1,800 PC, CTO PCIs. They got a similar success rate of 68%. They followed their patients out to three years, and their mortality rate, again, these Kaplan-Meier curves, there's an advantage in favor of the CTO PCIs that is statistically significant versus um, unsuccessful CTO PCIs or patients who are left with residual CTOs. The last study is, is, is the most recent and in my opinion the most compelling. This is a study um, from the United Kingdom in they have to register all of their PCIs in a large database. So this is all the PCIs. This is mining all the PCIs in the United Kingdom. They looked for CTO PCIs. They, they studied over 14,000 CTO PCIs with two, over two and a half year follow-up. And again, a very, very similar Kaplan-Meier curve, which shows them this is mortality, not MACE, not symptoms. These are hard endpoints. Are you alive or dead? There's an advantage in favor of successful CTO PCI. Another interesting subset of that is, is what they did find is that the more complete revascularization you did, including CTO PCIs, that was beneficial as well. We'll take one moment just to comment on the OAT trial. This is, this is a trial that's often quoted to CTO interventionalists as reasons not to do CTO PCI. And, and if you really look at this study, this is not a CTO trial. This is a, a trial about post-MI patients. And interestingly, they're, they're patients who do not have a large area of ischemia, so probably most of the muscle is dead. And, and no one in this room, Monos or I, are going to advocate opening up arteries where the muscle's already dead. So I'd contend this is, this is definitely not a CTO trial and not really relevant to uh, the benefit of CTO PCIs. The last thing we talk about is, is, is uh, quality of life. How does CTO interventions measure up in terms of improving quality of life? Sadly, there's not a lot of studies on this. The few studies that I could find, the first one is a cardiac MRI study of CTO PCIs looking at muscle viability, but in one subset of that, they, they looked at quality of life. And at six months, they found anginal improvement in 76% of their patients versus 17% in the medically treated arm. A bigger meta-analysis looking at multiple CTO PCI trials found a six-year significant reduction in angina with an odds ratio of 0.5. And I would say for, for, for interventionalists who do this or tackle this, um, this is, Manos' patient was a, a perfect illustration of that. As that is a very, very common theme that you'll see, and these are incredibly rewarding, uh, more so than other interventions where the patients, you see them the next day and they truly, truly feel great. They'll tell you, Doc, I can breathe, I can sleep, it's amazing. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. So on a quality of life benefit, it is also beneficial. So by the two measures that we looked at our yardstick, is there a mortality benefit with CTO PCI? Absolutely. Is there a quality of life benefit with CTO PCI? Yes. So in my opinion, CTO PCI is, is greatly beneficial and, and we should op be offering this to as many patients as you can. For the guests that are not from Texas, this is a slide for you.